The heaviest rain in decades leads to massive flooding. Will Trump's China tariffs be cut? And what's really in your morning cup of coffee? That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to like and leave a comment. It helps the algorithm. And make sure you're subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. And since YouTube also hasn't been notifying people of new episodes, check back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday for new episodes. Well, it's flood season once again in China, and you know what that means. The Chinese Communist Party's diligent preparation over the past year have prevented devastating flooding. I'm just kidding. Hundreds of thousands have been forced to evacuate. Yes, once again, epic flooding is ravaging China, captured in glorious vertical video. I know you're literally watching your whole life get swept away, but could you please think about my viewing experience? The only professional footage is from Chinese state-run media, which focuses on the party's resoundingly successful search and rescue operations, as compared to what people on the scene are actually seeing like rescue vehicles literally being washed away. Who rescues the rescuers? Here's what happens when authorities upstream open the floodgates so poorer rural areas take the damage instead of cities. This is something Chinese authorities have done in the past. You know a government isn't great when their policy towards the poor is the same as Pennywise the Clown's policy toward children. They all float. Now, you might be thinking, Chris, why are you so cynical about this? It's because this happens every year. And when it happens, the party comes out and tells everyone, oh, this is the worst rain in 60 years. What a disaster. We couldn't have done anything to prevent this. Well, guess what? In 2020, it was the worst floods in 30 years. In 2021, it was the worst rains in 1,000 years. Next year will be the worst flooding in 5,000 years of Chinese history. I'm surprised she doesn't order someone to collect two of every animal and build an ark. Not because of the flooding, but because they'll do anything to build up their navy. The reality is the Chinese Communist Party knows these floods happen often, and they don't care if people die or their homes are destroyed. That's why there's never anything done to, you know, actually fortify infrastructure from flooding. Check out this bridge in Nanping City being washed away. Tofu construction. People have been complaining about tofu construction for years, and nothing ever changes because guess what? The party doesn't care. What the party does care about is Taiwan, and they're plenty willing to spend money on that. More after the break. Welcome back. Did you know YouTube is accusing us of hate speech? That was from our recent episode about the rise of anti-Semitism in China. You see, Chinese state-run media says a secret Jewish cabal is running the U.S. government. And apparently exposing the Chinese Communist Party gets us censored for hate speech. That makes sense. Censor the people who are exposing the hate speech. The same thing happened when we did an episode about the CCP forcing Uyghur children into special schools that brainwashed them with party propaganda. A human reviewer at YouTube said we were pushing hateful and derogatory content. I guess the fact that we hate hate crimes is technically hateful, so touche, YouTube. But if talking about the crimes of the Chinese Communist Party gets us censored and demonetized, we literally can't make China uncensored. So there are two options. One, I start talking about all the happy ethnic minorities in China and the Communist Party's great efforts at fighting terrorism in Xinjiang. Or two, I just ignore YouTube's craven pandering to the Communist Party and keep doing what I'm doing. But I can only take option two with your help. Most of our budget to pay our staff and keep the studio lights on comes from viewer support, since obviously YouTube isn't allowing us to have ads on lots of our episodes. Because what kind of company would want to be associated with not liking hate crimes? 
That's such a layup, it should be the slogan of every major brand. Eat Subway, we don't like hate crimes. I know times are tough, but all it takes is as little as a dollar per episode. That's the difference between China Uncensored continuing or not. If you want to help us in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party, join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. You can contribute on our crowdfunding platform on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You can also make a monthly contribution on our exclusive censorship-free social media platform on chinauncensored.locals.com. Or you can make a one-time contribution on PayPal or with Bitcoin. More at chinauncensored.tv slash support. There are a lot of ways you can help support the show, and believe me, it's important you do. We're up against a lot. Link to everything are below. The Chinese Communist Party is working tirelessly to reunite the Taiwan province with mainland China. Just kidding, that's YouTube's version. In their version, it's basically the notebook. They're lovers who've been torn apart, but one day will be epically reunited. The real truth is the Chinese Communist Party is playing the evil empire and constantly harassing the self-governing democratic country, Taiwan. Yet again, China sent dozens of warplanes into the skies near Taiwan. That follows shortly after the launch of China's new aircraft carrier, the Fujian, named after the Chinese province closest to Taiwan, as well as what China claims was a successful anti-ballistic missile test. Basically, the message is that the Chinese Communist Party is growing stronger, and Taiwan will sooner or later be consumed by its insatiable greed. So the love story between China and Taiwan is less the notebook and more a guy relentlessly stalking his ex after she broke up with him. Not quite as romantic. And China won't stop with Taiwan. This week, Japan tracked eight Russian and Chinese warships near its territory. Yes, China and Russia are working together to divide up the world between them. I only take solace in knowing that at some point there will be a sudden but inevitable betrayal. But just because China isn't invading Taiwan right now, doesn't mean the regime isn't waging war. The Chinese Communist Party is putting pressure on other countries, companies, and even the World Cup to not recognize the existence of Taiwan. The organizers of the World Cup in Qatar listed the nationality of Taiwanese visitors applying for an identification card as Chinese Taipei. Boy, it's a shame cars don't run on gaslighting because there's so much Chinese gaslighting, it'd only be a nickel a gallon. Then there's economic warfare. After a Chinese ban on Taiwanese pineapples, China abruptly banned all imports of grouper from the island. Of course, when China banned Taiwanese pineapples, the rest of the world picked up the slack and bought even more Taiwanese pineapples than China had been buying. I expect the same will happen with grouper. Although, I liked getting the pineapple bouquets, not sure how I feel about the grouper bouquets. And after the break, it seems a lot of economic experts want to screw Americans. Welcome back. You know, you got to admire the Chinese Communist Party. When these Chinese officials wake up every morning, they could say, you know, we've done enough turning China into a dystopian Orwellian nightmare. We can take it easy now. But no. They never stop striving to do better. And by better, I mean worse. A lesson for all of us. The party wants to review every single social media comment on the entire Chinese internet. Yes, every single comment. All types of comments, including original posts, replies, and real-time comments that appear on top of a video. New proposed regulations would require every Chinese social media platform to hire content moderators to review every post and filter out ones that are, quote, harmful. Authorities are soliciting the public for feedback on the plan. It's a trap. The Biden administration is barely treading water as the U.S. economy suffers from devastating inflation and gas prices that can only be described as perfectly balanced. But instead of trying to reel in unrestrained government spending, cutting the fat out of the bureaucratic nightmare world of DC, or maybe, you know, trying for energy independence, the White House is hinting it may get rid of Trump's irresponsible China tariffs. 
Because for politicians, when all else fails, attack Trump. Their midterm slogan should just be, Orange you glad we're not Donald? And now that they've caught a whiff of blood, all the economic expert sharks out there are circling, chomping at the bit to go back to appeasing the Chinese Communist Party in the hopes they'll make money. A former U.S. ambassador says lifting the tariffs could slash inflation by 1% over time. Yes, let's give in to an authoritarian regime that wants to destroy us because it might eventually possibly even reduce some inflation by a little bit. That's like asking a rattlesnake for help removing a hangnail from your foot. A growing number of economists, political observers, and analysts have called on the Biden administration to slash tariffs as inflation and recession fears grow. Here's former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. Look, I think cutting the tariffs is clearly a good idea. It will hold down prices. It will enable us to take a more strategic approach uh, to dealing with China. Uh, no, it won't. Unless by strategic you mean desperate, then yeah, sure. Current Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen agrees with him. We all recognize that China engages in a range of unfair trade practices that it's important to address. But uh, the tariffs we inherited um, some serves no strategic purpose and raise costs to consumers. And so reconfiguring some of those tariffs so they make more sense and reduce unnecessary burdens is something that's under consideration. I mean, Janet Yellen is an expert, right? She's the Treasury Secretary. And she used to be the head of the Federal Reserve. We should trust the experts, right? Well, keep in mind last year, when the Fed was basically printing money, she said there'd be no inflation problem. And look at where we are now. Yellen should have known what printing money would do, but said there would be no inflation? She's either lying or incompetent. And whichever it is, I don't think we should be trusting her opinion on the China tariffs. She's like the economic equivalent of those old-timey doctors that said the best way to heal a sore throat was by smoking a pack of Marlboros. Mmm, that's some smooth flavor. Plus, printing money makes you look cool. But despite the Chinese Communist Party's acolytes in Washington, things don't always go their way. The party's attempts to control Pacific Island nations has hit another snag in Vanuatu. The pro-Beijing Prime Minister of Vanuatu was forced to shelve changes to their constitution that would have allowed foreign nationals to hold office. That's such a horrible idea, I can't even believe it was suggested. The only logical reason to pass a law like that would be to get Arnold Schwarzenegger as president. And that case makes perfect sense. Meanwhile, a new survey shows that more than half of New Zealand sees China as a threat, while only one in 10 Australians trust the Chinese government. And to that one in 10, I ask, why? You trust a regime that uses rape as a form of torture and literally has doctors kill dissidents by taking their organs? That seems too much, even for an island of criminals. That's why, according to data from the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, there's been an 800% increase in refugees from China since 2012. It's because they all trust the Chinese regime. Trust it to murder them. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but there's another good move by the UN on China this week. A UN biodiversity summit has been moved from China to Canada because of China's oppressive zero COVID policy. What's that, Shelley? Oh, the biodiversity summit was moved because China requested it, since China is the chair of this round of meetings. Makes sense. After all, the Chinese Communist Party, through its cover-up, gave us COVID and all the variants. So in a way, they really have made great strides in increasing biodiversity. The property market in China isn't doing so hot. But several desperate real estate developers have come up with a novel solution, taking wheat and garlic as down payments. Did I say desperate? I meant strategic. Because who needs money as a down payment when you can have garlic bread? Chinese leader Xi Jinping has a message for Hong Kong. He loves you. I hope not like he loves Taiwan. 
in this very long compilation of Xi Jinping's speeches about Hong Kong, called Hong Kong's Development is Always Close to My Heart, it says she has deep feelings for this piece of land, the land, not the people. Because this July 1st is the 25th anniversary of the British handover of Hong Kong. Except Hong Kong textbooks now say Hong Kong was never a British colony, it was just under temporary control. But it's rumored that Xi Jinping himself may visit Hong Kong for the celebrations. If he loves them as much as he says, it'll probably look something like this. It'll be a very interesting time in Hong Kong, to say the least. Stay tuned for more. But while we're on Hong Kong, let's talk about the often overlooked Macau, the former Portuguese colony next door. Macau is currently in the midst of a COVID outbreak, but don't worry, essential businesses are staying open. And by essential businesses, I mean the casinos. Because communist officials need a place to launder their money even during a pandemic. And an update on the Confucius Institute. That's the party-backed Chinese language program. It's set up in American universities to spread communist propaganda. Well, according to this new report from the National Association of Scholars, of 118 Confucius Institutes that once existed in the United States, 104 have closed or are in the process of doing so. Well, there's nothing more authentically communist than spreading to new regions and failing miserably. The bad news, they're just being rebranded with other names. Institutions have entered new sister university agreements with Chinese universities, established new centers closely modeled on defunct Confucius Institutes, and even continue to receive funding from the same Chinese government agencies that funded the Confucius Institutes. More proof that despite being places of higher education, universities are really dumb. Remember how I said communist officials wake up each morning thinking about how to make the world a worse place? Well, they're even turning our morning cup of coffee against us. According to this new report from friend of the show, Christopher Balding, smart coffee makers from China-based company Calerm collect information such as payment data, time, and location from users in China. Because China likes its data like it likes its coffee. Stolen! The report says, while we cannot say this company is collecting data on non-Chinese users, all evidence indicates their machines can and do collect data on users outside of mainland China and store the data in China. The data is collected at the point of operation from software embedded in the coffee maker. Which is why I don't drink coffee in the morning. No, I start every day with righteous indignation against communists. It's the best part of waking up, sheeple! And now, as a thank you to the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I'll answer one of their questions. Today's question comes from Noah Swan, a brand new supporter on Patreon. Longtime fan since 2017, awesome job. With Xi Jinping trying to make a cult of personality, why aren't more Chinese officials doing the same? Very interesting question. Well, there's two big reasons why no one else is doing it. One, Xi Jinping would not allow a pretender to the throne. And two, after the cult of personality that surrounded Mao Zedong, the Chinese Communist Party never wanted to go through that again. Anyone seen as trying to inflate themselves above everyone else would get quickly chopped down. Also, could you imagine a cult of personality around Hu Jintao? What personality is there to make a cult out of? He's more bland than the tofu China uses to make their bridges. That's what makes Xi Jinping's rise to power so unconventional. For a variety of factors that I don't have time to get into here, he was able to amass incredible personal power over the years, probably becoming the closest thing to a new Mao since Mao. But that's also dangerous. You fly too close to the sun, you're gonna get burned. That's how the story went, right? Thanks for your question and your support, Noah. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, the links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.